Massive rotator cuff lesions are the most difficult kind of lesions to treat and nowadays we know that there are quite different patterns of massive lesions in the shoulder. In this case I am presenting a case of a 64 year old woman that was having pain over her left shoulder for the last three years with very typical signs and symptoms of cuff pain. This is her MRI and this is a coronal view in T2 in which we can see a quite retracted lesion of the supraspinatus with some poor quality tissue in the insertion area. In, in this image we can see a sagittal view still in T2 revealing a large and anterior lesion of the supraspinatus with a quite hooked acromion. And finally this is an axial view still in T2 in which we can see that a large anterior lesion was here and present. Arthroscopic management was indicated and so this is her arthroscopy. So this is her arthroscopy, this is a left shoulder, we establish an anterior portal with a spinal needle and once we establish the, the anterior portal we first evaluated the biceps pulling it out of the pulley and it had a lot of synovitis so we decided to perform a tenotomy. Then we took a fast look in the subscap that was obviously okay like, like it was in the MRI and in, in clinical findings in the office. And then be, uh, before doing the tenotomy we performed a very fast and simple debridement of the anterior uh, rotator interval. So then we performed the biceps tenotomy in a very standard fashion using an arthroscopic scissor and once the tenotomy was done we performed a very fast debridement of the biceps anchor and then we moved it to the subacromial space. So then we went to the subacromial space and removed all the bursa and the synovitis. Now we can see a very large lesion as we saw in the MRI. So we, we started just cleaning the greater tuberosity to have a better look in the uh, of the lesion and then we we clean it the lateral gutter and the anterior lateral gutter this is a very important part of the surgery and now we are detaching and cleaning the internal deltoid fascia to have a better approach to, to the subacromial space so then we establish an anterior superlateral portal with a spinal needle and move the camera to the lateral portal so now we are working through the anterior superlateral portal assessing with a, a grasper the tendon mobility the tendon was in, a, in quite a good shape but not very mobile so we started to perform a lot of releases working for the posterior portal first with electrocautery to avoid some bleeding that is very typical in this area and we release it all the, the adhesions between the cuff and the distal the distal clavicle and then we reassess it, the tendon mobility and we can even grasp the tendon as we are seeing now to have a better debridement of all the adherences. Then we, we entered with a, a small oste osteotome and released all the, the adherences between the inferior part of the posterior superior cuff and the superior part of the glenoid and working for, for the posterior portal we still had to remove some adhesions in the subacromial space. The, the, after that we reassessed mobility, the tendon was reasonably mobile, the tendon was as I have said in good shape but not very mobile, so at that moment we decided that we would have to medialize the footprint and to create a new bony bed, a little bit medialize it, and so we performed a very simple and fast the breedment of the edges of the lesion. This is what we, we are doing now. And then we started to medialize the footprint. So we, we entered it with a soft tissue shaver to clean the greater tuberosity for the anterior superlateral portal. And then for the posterior portal, we entered it with the burr. And very gently, very softly, we started to create a new bony bed so medializing the footprint, this has to be very gently and very softly. 
And now we can see that a new bony bed was done, was created. So at that moment, we entered with a soft tissue shaver through, through the posterior portal just to clean the synovitis of the anterior super of the anterior lateral gutter, I mean, and then using a spinal needle, we established a good position for the first anchor. So then we put a 5.0 double loaded anchor, a metallic one, and after the anchor was put, we just tested it and it was very st uh, stable. And then using a bird beak entering through the posterior portal and the grasper working through the anterior superlateral portal, we passed it the bird beak through the, the tendon and in a retrograde fashion we pass it the first suture through the tendon. At that moment we isolated the first suture in the posterior portal using it as a waiting portal and repeated the procedure using a bird beak and then we in the same way pass it the second suture, the blue one, in a retrograde fashion. At that moment, we, we would have to tie both knots, but in order not to make a mess with the, the knots, we, we, we like to isolate them in different portals. So we isolated the first suture, the blue one, in the anterior portal, and then we isolated the two parts of the white suture in the anterior superlateral portal. Then we fastly moved the camera to the posterior portal and tied the first knot for the anterior superlateral portal, and we then move it, the camera back to the lateral portal, remove it for the anterior superlateral portal, the sutures, and then we tie it the second knot. After the knot was done, we would have to reassess the tendon coverage, and still there was a reasonable part of the head to be covered, even with a medialized footprint, so we, we would have to do the same thing, we, we just reassessed the tendon mobility. It was reasonably mobile, so we put a second anchor as posterior as we could, but with a very safe distance from the first anchor. And then we put a, a, a double loaded anchor too. Once the anchor was in place, we just, just tested it, it was very nice, and we would have to do the same thing. So, entering through the posterior portal with a bird beak, we pass it the sutures, the first one in a retrograde fashion, out of the posterior portal. This is what we are doing now. And at that moment, we decided to tie that knot, so we would, we would have to isolate very carefully the white suture, because we don't want to make a mess with the suture at that moment of the surgery. So we put the blue one out of the anterior superlateral portal. And this is what we are doing now. And then we would have to tie the first knot of this, this second anchor. Now we are tying the, the first knot of this, this second anchor, putting a lot of pressure in order for the tendon to heal in the new bony bed, in the medialized new bony bed. And after the knot was tied, we would have to do just the same thing. So entering for the posterior portal with a suture passer, we pass it a, two, a number two proline, and we put it that with a grasper out of the anterior superlateral portal. And in a retrograde fashion, we pass it the white suture through the tendon and out of the posterior portal. And then we would have to do the same thing back again. So we would have to put the white suture out of the anterior superlateral portal. And once it was in the anterior superlateral portal, we would have to tie the fourth knot, the second knot of the second anchor. So now we are tying the second knot of this, the second anchor. And after the knot was cut, that was the final image. We can see that the tendon was very nicely reattached to the greater tuberosity with a good reattachment, but with no tension. This is very important important at that moment we felt so very free, uh, free and comfortable to perform an acromioplasty so we detached the coracle acromio ligament and then we, we entered it with a, a bird to perform a very standard and simple acromioplasty, a formal acromio uh, uh, 
Plessy, and that was so the final image in which we can see that the tendon was really fully reattached with no tension and with uh, a, a, a very nice footprint, and at that moment, so the surgery was then finished.